Whoa! Don't let this happen to your boat's diesel engine like it's happened to several of our friends. Make sure you watch this video to the end to learn what it is and how to prevent it. Welcome to an informative video from the Blown Away channel where we discuss the costly engine condition hydrolock. There is almost nothing on YouTube that addresses this issue. And if you or a friend of yours owns a sailboat, you must watch to learn how to perform the inexpensive do-it-yourself preventative measures detailed in this video. Eileen and I mentioned Hydrolock to owner Gregory Tomat of St. Martin Marine Engineering Consultants and he taught us how to avoid it by preventing seawater from entering through the engine exhaust hose by installing an anti-siphon loop. In this video he installs one to my port engine and then explains the condition and how the solution works. Next, using his expert work as a guide, I install the anti-siphon loop to the starboard engine and he checked my work and where I detail the installation step-by-step -step for you to follow. What is this hydrolock thing? An offshore passage in rough conditions with large waves rushing past the boat, such as sailing on a beam reach, set up hydrostatic pressure that causes water to siphon into the engine. Water siphons back into the engine exhaust hose, fills it and flows into the engine via the open exhaust valve. The anti-siphon loop we're installing blocks the water siphon, thus preventing hydrolock. Seawater in your diesel engine is bad news. However, worse yet, your engine can also suffer the mechanically fatal combination of higher starting torque and compression of a diesel engine combined with the non-compressible water in your engine cylinder preventing the piston from completing his travel. Either the engine must stop rotating or a mechanical failure such as a bent or broken connecting rods, a fractured crank, a fractured head, a fractured block, crankcase damage, well, I think you get the message. Now, watch carefully while we show you how to prevent this from happening to your boat. Example, you wanna come here? Okay, cool, okay. yep, come over there. Look, look exactly what I was explaining, right? Okay, yeah. You see, this is the water here. Yeah. You see that hose still full? Yeah. See where the water stays? Yeah. And look at the other side. It's empty. It's empty. The vent, once you shut the engine down, the valve opens in the vented loop and allow that side to flow down. But there's no way that side can go up because uh, gravity is still holding against gravity. That's the whole point of the vent. Uh, but what, is, what does it have to do with coming from outside the boat? Well, it's what happens sometimes on a sailboat. Yeah. Right? Uh, depending on the, how fast the boat yeah. goes, mm -hmm. with the speed, the water, the water speed and the hull when you shut the engine off. And most likely, some people like to put the engine in reverse. The water pressure sometimes spin the prop slowly while sailing. Okay. If Sucking engine, water in. If the, in a, if the engine is spinning slowly, which means the water pump is turning as well. If the engine's turning slowly, the water pump is turning as well, which means water's coming in. So you're filling the whole system slowly. Ah, uh, okay. And by doing that, so regardless of how hard you're spinning, there's no way you can ever fill that up. Because what would happen? This side vent, the, the vented loop, kind of trick the system, makes makes the whole thing thinks the engine is way high. Got it. Very difficult to even, you know, for that thing to ever happen. That's okay. the reason I like to install clear holes in this. Cause it's so you can see it. So, because someone asked this question and I didn't know how to answer it. I wasn't understanding what was going on because of the. Um, the clear hoses are still going. He's like, wait, you have clear hoses still going to it, so what difference does it make? But it it basically stops the water from going one side to the other. Yeah, it's, it's just pretty much a thing. That's, that's the whole purpose of the valve. And that's the reason it's very important not to ever plug that end of this right. hose. Right, right, that's right. That's the vent. Right. Because uh, if you close it, it's like you never had a vent. Right. Because I've seen a lot of people make that mistake where the hose and hang on the bilge and the bilge, like put it so close to the bilge whenever you have water in the bilge and water just clogs, clogs it. it. And, uh, and then it's like you don't have a loop. And because the installer did such a great job, it makes it <laughs> foolproof. I had a good teacher. 
<laughs> thank you, Gregory. Good job. You did a good job, man. Oh, thank, thank you. you. And the only the maintenance item is right underneath there, that white yeah, so piece. Yeah, just that piece. You on score? Yeah. Um, over time, because what happened over time? Let's say you know, uh, during um, winterization, right? Um, right. Stop the bulb not running it for three or four months. What yeah. what will happen is you pull that off. You on score that? Okay. And you have that small nipple right here. You're right. I'm gonna pull it off. Okay. That's okay. the valve, pretty much. Okay. And this will be full of salt. Mm. With the salt build up, and that hose will be pissing out water. And that's when you know it's time mm. to service it. So what you do, we just take that off. You get, you know, to fresh water, you know, to the sink and rinse everything Isn't out. That amazing. And pop okay. it back in. Mm. How often do you have to do that if you're running the engines all the time? Well, if you run the engine all the time, most likely it would be hard. It would be so much harder for salt to build up. Uh -huh. The salt yeah. usually builds up when you're so not running. Right. We're installing a Vetus anti-siphon loop. It's our EMR engine to prevent seawater from backing up and entering the engine. It's a clever way to prevent this from happening and to save a whole lot of heartache. Now, this uh, anti-siphon loop has a valve in it. You want to make sure you get that. And right now, We've already screwed that as high as you can in the engine compartment. You can see down here's my engine, and we've got it up as high as possible. I've cut the bottoms of these in order to fit the one inch flexible hose with wire. You need the wire in there in order to keep its form when you're turning corners. And then here is the valve right there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to take off this hose right here so the water is going to come up through here that's going to cause the problem but what we're going to do is give it more height and more hose to run through so it doesn't back up into the engine because here it's just got a short area for that to happen so we're going to take this off we're going to run a hose up into here and then we're going to run a hose from here into this point right here. And then we're going to attach a small 8 millimeter hose right here. And it's going to run down here. All right, we just pulled this out. This used to fit right there. Uh, we may reuse these hose clamps because they look like they're in pretty good condition. Now it's time to measure the hose from here to here and get that clamped in. And we just applied that there, and then this is going to come up to here. So we're going to have to measure and cut this hose. And we just cut and so with wire cutters. And now we need to attach it right up there. So we have a vest attached to this right here, and then the next thing is going to be attached to the exhaust. I think I'm doing this backwards, but either way you do it, it doesn't matter. So here we go. There they go. This goes from here to here. Actually, the flow will go from the salt water coming in this big pipe up underneath the hole, and then it will come up here to lose momentum, and then over through here, and we're going to put little hose on a valve which is going to cause the water to come into the bilge instead of back into this right here so this is eight millimeter hose right here going right there we're going to put the we're going to put the hose clamp on there and then we're going to put the end of this down into the bilge where the water will go instead of into the engine she goes, this is in, and this uh, hose goes all the way down there. I've diverted it so it uh, empties harmlessly into the bilge and not into the engine. That's that, uh, end of the job, and hopefully this helps prevent a lot of heartache.